Now put it in your mouth. Well, I don't know what that was about. Hey, Nuggets, welcome to the Food Truck. My name's Druka, and today we're doing episode six. I think it's six <laughs> of Disco Elysium. I'm, I'm not sure exactly anymore. I feel like I've kind of lost track of things for better or worse. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, yeah, right. So a little recap before we keep going. Nothing much really happened last time, uh, all things considered. For the most part, I was look, going around town trying to ask people for money <laughs> for the inn, for repairs. Um, failed miserably with all my roles, or a lot of my roles last time, so that went nowhere. Uh, but luckily enough for us, our best friend Kim, Kim yet again came through with, for us and produced some hubcaps that we could sell. Uh, and get some money for the night uh though I, though i think now we have to like earn our own money for each night and i don't know how we're gonna make up that cash but we're gonna get there eventually we're gonna get there eventually and uh, i guess we did learn a little bit about ourselves uh huge trauma from the past concerning exes which you know it clears up some things from the beginning beginning it clears up some things uh from the beginning of the game and i find a little piece of yeah it's uh unfortunate but we don't know the whole story just yet so we'll probably get that eventually just not today however it is a new day today and i have no idea what i'm gonna do i have a, i have a few leads that i haven't covered last time or followed up on last time because we were running out of daylight basically so yeah let's uh let's hope we get somewhere today so let's get let's get on with it let's get on with it all right so right i guess we just go outside check if uh kim is up knock knock No knock knock. Okay. Uh, where is Kim? The door is closed. Yeah, well, I don't think we need to bother the the neighbor lady in the hostel, so we're not gonna do that. I feel like we're gonna meet her again, though. Oh, there they are. Looks like we got a lot of people to interview before we go do something today. All right, Kim. What's up? What's good? Good morning. Good morning. He gives you a quick nod. I've got some good news. Ooh, what I is it? I took care of the body. The thought of him decomposing in my MC wouldn't let me sleep. Good, thanks. I don't know if I, I was... I don't know if I was ready to let him go. Uh, good, thanks. I'm just glad he's gone. We have other matters to attend to. Quite a bit. Uh, what's on the agenda for today? Oh, well. We'll get the armored boots <laughs> in another lifetime. In another lifetime. The lieutenant is downplaying his contribution. He got up before sunrise to get this done, and now he's quite pleased with himself for taking care of the gruesome business so efficiently. The Union Master finally turned up. As and he should. Rowdy. We need to talk to them. Yeah, I saw them. I thought they were supposed to be here in the afternoon, not right now. Why do we need to talk to them? What do you mean, Rowdy? Are these the men Gar told us about yesterday? Uh, what do you mean, Rowdy? I mean, ungovernable. Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCA being here. They prefer to be policed by the Union. These men here, men who drink beer for breakfast. <laughs> There's talk of an armed wing of the Union called the Hardy Boys, uh, yes. who are responsible for state policing. I think it's them. Yes, I think I, I think I know who those are. Uh, are these the men Gart told us about? I completely forgot. Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just like the manager said. Sure. One loose thread less to worry about, and one big problem to replace it. Mm. Why do we need to talk to them? I, I think we already know, but let's just clarify really quick. Everything points to the Dock Workers Union. The belt used for hanging him, the circumstances in Martinez, my preliminary information, which may, of course, all be wrong, 
but we still need to talk to them, and it won't be easy. There's so many of them. Maybe we should call in reinforcements. That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. Solving one murder isn't worth a conflict between the RCM and the Debarders Union. In fact, even the death of two detectives might not warrant an all-out war. So let's keep a cool head, okay? Oh, so you're saying we might die. Gotcha. He's not exaggerating about that mortal danger. Just calmly factoring it in. Your fists clench and your pulse rises uncomfortably. All right, let's roll. One more thing before we do. Mm -hmm. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them, continue with our business. Okay. Yeah, streetwise. Zoom right past. Do it on your own terms. Why would we put it off? But aren't you curious to know what they have to say about the murder? They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to you. Whatever you decide is fine by me. <sighs> I guess we could leave them alone for now. Uh, we do have a lead in the apartments to check up on and then maybe that'll help convince them to do certain things we'll see nothing here oh yeah we could check the i wonder if the um the armor info is is ready yet okay so we have an extra point however i just found out last time that you can put points to unlock skill slots here, the thought slots. So we are going to do that. We're going to open one up. Yes. And we need to internalize something. Uh, we have three options. However, one of them doesn't look like something we want to internalize. Embarrassment to the party. White morning. Gu de, de le million. million? I know there's one that we don't want. I think it might be... It might be this one. This might be one we don't want to internalize. You see yourself abo uh, from above. You're passed out on blue tiles. Great white, the valley. I forgot a name. The feeling animates him. Commodore Red puts on disco clothes and gets smaller and smaller. We might do this later, but right now I don't think it's a priority. I want to do the rigorous self-critique first. Something about capo type? This one might be good too. Uh, though, let's start with this. Internalize self-critique. And then eventually we'll do the... Yolande de Million, and maybe White Morning. I'm a little iffy about this one, because it seems like it might negatively affect us. Let's see. If Art isn't paying me enough for this, who art thou? Let me handle this. The woman says to the crowd in the mess hall before turning to you. Detective disorientated. Are you still <laughs> wondering where you are? This is Martinez. In case you've forgotten, I advise you not to overstay your welcome. Wait, aren't you the gardener? She seems very hostile today. What's, what happened? Her entire character has shifted. This young woman is cold as ice. You're the gardener. No, I am not a gardener. I'm a legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. Oh. So let's get to it. You're looking for Titus Hardy? You think he has information that will help you? Maybe he does. The man on her right. There's no one to her right, though. I think it's one of these guys for sure. That's Titus. Talk to him, but know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming, nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest if we have to. Wow, Kim, okay. That's good. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. Could this be the Miss Beaufort that Easy Leo mentioned? The one Mr. Everard sent to law school? 
What's your role in all this? Are you Lizzie, Elizabeth, Miss Buford? What if I want to talk to you, not Titus? What are you going to do to me? Why are you so aggressive? I think let's uh, start from the top. I'm kind of curious. What's your role in all this? Like I already told you, I'm a legal counselor. Do you have hearing problems? Wow, she is so rude today. Are you Lizzie, Elizabeth, Miss Buford? I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Titus Hardy. Even though she has excellent control over herself, something moved behind her eyes, in the way she stands, in her face. Ah, uh, easy. Leo told me about you. He likes to talk a lot. Uh, let's not rat out on Leo. I like the guy. And it's best that uh, we don't rat him out. He could get in trouble. Hardy, not yet. I had another question. No. Talk to Titus. What if I want to talk to you, not Titus? What you want is of no significance, officer. Don't test your authority. In Martinez, you are no one. What are you going to do to me? Hmm. The lieutenant is not satisfied with the approach. What are we going to do to you? <laughs> wow. What happened to you? The union isn't going to do anything to you. It is not a crime syndicate. It is a labor organization. You, they are going to do something to me, though. Uh-huh. <laughs> Goddamn right it is. If anything, it is the RCM who do things to people. But we digress. Why are you so aggressive? Aggressive? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Hmm. So you were spying on us. And now you represent murder suspects. Just dock workers. Yeah, that sounds a little bit... Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob. Enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishal. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all. And you're their bodyguards. Yeah, I don't know anything about this. Fuck yeah. The tall, broad-shouldered man takes a sip of his beer. So ask what you came to ask. Or get back to your commanders. The world needs a financial buffer zone. Need no need to get emotional. Privatization is not unlawful. It's cool and funny. Maybe you're just not historic individuals. Uh, I don't know where you heard that, but it's wrong. The RCM is principled and strong, unlike you socialists. I like that. Good start. Let's take a step further. Armed uprising. What are the union's plans? Let's do that. Uh, let's ask those questions. I don't want to antagonize her, at least not yet. There's nothing... I have nothing against her, but holy crap, her tune is... Her tune is pretty... aggressive. Let's. All right, let's talk to Titus, but not yet. Let's talk to this lady first. Just a moment. Uh, the old woman turns back to the cafeteria manager. She's agitated, judging from the way she keeps pulling at the frayed edge of her blanket. And there's no public phones nearby? There is not. The closest <laughs> phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. The cafeteria manager appears generally apologetic. It's fine, I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. Good day, ma'am. Everything all right? Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. Well, maybe we can help you with that. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead, too. Uh... Well, I know what's wrong with the phone line. The copper wires are gone. Why did you need to use the phone anyway? To let the young woman who's house-sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and our friend Gary were supposed to get back by Monday night. But they're still missing, and I haven't heard from them. Oh, that's not good. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. She looks down. A little missing persons puzzle might just be the thing to take your mind off the hangover. Okay, I'll bite. Has your husband gone missing before? This sounds more like a side thing. I need to take care of my main thing, then I'll get back to this. Uh, has your husband gone missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him at all. 
He always plans his expeditions so carefully. A cold breeze hisses through dense thickets of reeds. Something sweet in it, somnolent. A damp chill goes down your spine. When you look around, you're still in the whirling in rags. But you have more important things to worry about. Now she glances out the window towards the bay. Uh, let's see, what is this expedition your husband was on? So your husband is some kind of scientist? Tell me more about morale, looks, character, your relationship. I kind of want to help her out, and we should probably keep an eye out for this guy anyway, so let's uh, start from the top. What is, your, what is this expedition your husband was on? Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. He and his assistant Gary are studying an extremely rare species of insect. But they should have returned by now. They were just going down the coast across the water lock to set a few traps. He said they'd be back on Monday. What could be keeping them? Well, at the very least, I do know that the water lock is broken so there's that uh i did hear of a cult across the the bridge so they might have gotten caught up in that too the water lock that was broken could this be it wait who's this gary person do you trust him oh sweetie it's nothing like that she smiles gary's as loyal as they come i trust him with my husband's life any day the water lock to the other side of the coast is broken. They're probably just stuck over there. Oh my. What happened to the water lock? Ah, uh, I really don't know. Well, whatever the cause, I'm thankful. To both of you, you've spared me another sleepless night. She turns to the lieutenant. Okay. You're welcome, ma'am. I hate to ask, but if your investigation takes you to the other side of the coast, Please do keep an eye out for my husband. Will do. Yes, some left field scientific research is exactly what you need right now. <laughs> Funk up that vanilla murder investigation. Funk up. And if you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the Whirling. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired. And it's cold out there. If I see him, I'll let him know you're here. When or if I get there. Accept task. I've really spent too much time on this side case it is, as it is. Yeah, I'll, I'll let him know. I'll let him know. I like this lady. Oh, you're such a dear. Thank you, sweetie. Uh, so your husband is some kind of scientist? Oh, yes. A zoologist. A cryptozoologist, to be more precise. What is cryptozoology? It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythological beasts and urban legends. The lieutenant sounds unimpressed. That's uh, one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. She's used to playing off such insults casually, but they still affect her. Yeah, I imagine. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. <laughs> it's a hobby. It's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology, one specializing in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. Searching for such species called cryptids is difficult and often thankless, and frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. Uh, tell me about morale, looks, character, your relationship. Oh dear, I'm not sure where to begin. Uh, what does your husband look like? Let's start with that, because I don't know what this guy looks like. Hmm, well, his expression is slightly grumpy, but his eyes are always bright and curious, like a small boy's. And his palms are quite coarse from all the field work, but he's quite gentle. You can't go around forever sure feeling grown men's hands. <laughs> If you want to find her husband, you'll need more concrete information. Uh, let's try again. Why don't you try describing him as you would one of your cryptids? That's good enough. Let me ask you something else. Uh, cryptids. Oh, well, he's a bit shorter than you, but with a larger frame. And he has longish white hair, usually a bit uncombed. You might say wild, even. Okay, that's descriptive. The lieutenant pulls out his notebook and begins jotting down the woman's description. One other thing, 
he'll likely have all kinds of field gear on him, even if he's not out in the reeds, you know, just in case. How long have you been married? Uh, I don't think we need to know this. Let's just say, I think I have all the information I need. Let's move on. I hope I've been useful. What's, uh, tell me more about this rare insect your husband's looking for. Oh, sweetie, it's fascinating. But I shouldn't bore you with entomological minutiae. She catches herself. The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. No, I want to hear about the insect. You're right, I don't have time for insect facts right now. Let's uh, talk about something else. No, I want to hear about the insect. I'm curious. Well, it's a phasmid, technically, but... What's a, what's a phasmid? Ah, yes. Phasmatodia. A diverse group of insects whose bodies resemble twigs, leaves, that sort of thing. Ghost insects. Colloquially. Oh, but those are real, right? Where other phasmids imitate sticks or leaves, this one's a living reed. It disguises itself among the reeds here on the Insul Indian coast. Hence its name, the Insul Indian Phasmid. Perhaps you'll end up co-discovering the Phasmid with us, officers. She looks you in the eye and nods thoughtfully. There's a touch of awe in the way she enunciated the creature's name. I knew it. We're going to be chasing made up insects <laughs> with cryptozoologists. Hey, it's just a side job. I mean, if we find them, we find them. Don't worry about that, Kim. The lieutenant size. <laughs> it's not made up, officer. I can assure you. It's simply elusive. So much so that most establishment zoologists doubt it exists at all. What makes you think the phasmid is around here? So is it dangerous? Is it valuable? Does it have cool powers? Uh... What makes you think the phasmids around here? Well, some teenagers making out in the reeds saw one. They they didn't know what it was, of course, but there was a brief article in a local newspaper about their encounter with a ghost insect that looks like the reeds. Gary sent us the clipping. So a newspaper clipping is all the evidence you have? Of course, most phasmid sightings turn out to be false alarms, but their description matched the Insul Indian phasmid perfectly. And they didn't even know what they were looking at. Enthusiasm has wiped the worry from her face. Her eyes sparkle behind her glasses. You seem really excited about this cryptid. I suppose I have something of a personal connection to the Insul Indian Phasmid. All scientists have their little hobby horses. So is it dangerous? <laughs> Not at all. Why else would it hide itself so carefully? Is it valuable? Oh, I doubt it. No one gets into cryptozoology for the money, <laughs> sweetie. So, does it have cool powers? Just curious. Yes, it can blend in almost perfectly among the reeds. It's how it stayed hidden all these years. Centuries, even. You know, I mean, it's, this is kind of like that, um... Ah, oh, jeez, what's that name of that fish? What's the name of that fish where it's like from the dinosaurs or something and they thought it was extinct but apparently it's now i mean it, there is a small colony somewhere in uh, africa that exists and it's only there but it exists nonetheless what was it coelocanth I, that's what it was coelocanth they exist still which is amazing and people thought they it died out millions of years ago or something Okay, what's so special about this stick bug, then? Oh dear. I'm afraid I'm not explaining this very well. It is very special. The woman's face flushes with embarrassment. Morel can explain it all much better. I wish you could hear him describe it. Then you'd understand, I'm sure. Less worried about a husband, uh... Maybe you should convince her to tell you about some cool cryptids. That's it for now, ma'am. I mean, I would like to hear about it. Sure, why not? Let's let's give it a shot. You're an enthusiastic idiot, <laughs> but you're still an idiot. I want to know everything about cryptids, living cryptids, ex extinct cryptids, marine cryptids, land cryptids. Bring it on. We don't have time for Cryptozoology 101. Let's get back to work, shall we? Uh, sorry about that, Kim. I got distracted. That's, that's off for it. No, man, thank you. Wow. So someone's been a little 
boring. No, I'm not. Get, get out of here. What? What? Yes, my standard liege. Someone's seen all sorts of wild ideas pop off and thought, I'll take the boring one. The regular, please. The brown. I like brown. I like standards. Look, I'm just trying to do my job. No need for extravagance. What is this? Picking on me for not being crazy enough? That's the least of my concerns. Kim, am I boring? <laughs> Kim, am I boring? <laughs> you? I wouldn't worry about that. Okay. See? You're so regular and vinyl brown. He doesn't even want to talk to you about it. What is this? Picking on me for not being crazy enough? That's the least of my concerns. No need to be defensive. The regularity, the brownness, the cut and dry have their appeal. A very standard appeal. Drama, why are you picking a fight with me? Look, I'm just trying to do my job. No need for extravagance. Of course you do. Let's get right to it. My ah. lord's copper type is regular cop. I'll let everyone know. I'll send out a telefax. Wait, wait, wait. This will be my copper type now? Why not? Send out the Telefax then? I'm not ashamed. Yeah, no need. Let's keep that announcement on standby for now. Uh, wait, this will this will be my copper type now? Yes, the type of cop you are, sire. Think of it as a caste, a class even, a nation of regular law officials that you belong to. It comes, of course, with the usual benefits. So we're going to be a sorry cop and a regular cop. And nah, no need. Let's keep that announcement on standby for now. Good, good. Of course. To outright declare yourself something does seem a bit too interesting now, doesn't it? I won't trouble you any further. Jeez, my my brain is making fun of me. Can I help you? My bill for tonight? Okay, nothing. All right. Uh, wait. Is why is there like a thing in the kitchen? Tomatoes are so thinly sliced you can see through them. Amazing. Can I do anything about this door? You see a heavy steel door with a prom- Nope, not yet. How about you? Got anything? The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Do you know what's behind that door? Point to the blue door. He looks up at you, then looks away quickly. Shrugging and muttering something to himself. Well, that's clear enough. Okay. Shrugging is an international sign for, no, I don't know what's behind that door. Okay. Well, stay masculine, my friend. Okay, I don't want to talk to him just yet. We may have something else. Anything else here? Nope. I mean, yeah, he's probably... Who I have to talk to next, but who's this guy? He wasn't here yesterday. Or maybe he was. He shit's got nothing on me. Who's T? Uh let's check to see if they got the number on the Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and this is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Uh, have you heard back from the ICP about the serial number? Yes. The armor was produced by Fairweather in their facilities in Betancourt, sur la clé in 42. 42? That's a while back. It was part of a special order for Corps de Pharmacie, a security firm contracted to protect the interests of Iranese pharmaceutical companies in the Seminine conflict. So, mm. it seems the armor went to Seminine. That's where the paper trail ends, though. Even the film has proven difficult to track. Corps de Pharmacy has been renamed several times over in the years since the armor was issued. Do you know what it's called now? The most recently registered film that the ICP has been able to connect to the CDP is a military contractor called Trenel. And the one before it was down well. I think they might be the same contractor. A suit of armor like this would have been manufactured with a particular person's physique in mind. You should ask for whom this suit was fitted. Huh. So the guy that was killed was a military contractor? Is that it? And the dock workers didn't like that, so they killed him? Is that probably what happened? First, has the firm continued to work for 
pharmaceutical companies through all the name changes. A suit of armor like this would have been customized to fit the wearer. There must be a record of the person to whom it was issued. Let's try the first one. How to say, the client list is rather diverse and incomplete. The only concern seems to be that the mercenaries are always deployed in third and fourth world countries. Right. Uh, any record on who it was issued to? Yes, but the ICP tends to be reluctant to sell private sector records. I could try to talk them into it, though. Yes, please do try. It's imperative that we learn whose armor this was. Sure. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully I will have more information for you then. Did you find more about the owner of the armored boots? Uh, let's see. We're done with the radio for now. Over and out. In the cabin, you see a set. Okay, that was informative. Uh, can't do anything. What's this? All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters, washing the filth away. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. What am I doing? Looking up at the sky, cold water dripping from your hair. What do I see? Grey sky like great battleships, clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. This is a very somber scene. A city in ruins, barely holding itself together. It's a wonder it still works. How does it feel? Humid. Your coat shields you from the rain while the city shivers around you. What is in the west? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet beyond the Bay of Revachol. Ghosts rise into the sky. Who are you, ghosts? What is down the shore? Run the fingers through your dampened hair. Who are you, ghosts? The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. What is down the shore? Urban coastline, rain dripping off etonite covered roofs, cinder blocks left over from half finished construction, a defunct research and development building once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. And beyond that, Coal City, end of all lines. Run your fingers through your dampened hair. Your hair is an oily mess flecked with ash from neighboring coal plants. Smoke stacks rise somewhere in the distance. Uh, let's see, what's in the east? The great gates of the industrial harbor are locked. A chill runs down your back. You shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide. Clench your teeth to stop shuddering. Behind the gates, heaps of supply crates, red and blue metal shipping containers, slick with rain. The Greater Revachol Industrial Harbor is an artificial mountain range. Immense wealth resides within, and immeasurable poverty in its shadow. And beyond that? La Drissienne, King Dries Passenger Harbor. Cruise ships flanked by dock arms, cranes watching over the mouth of the river distributary. What is across a distributary? Kuron, the lower middle class, Distributary after distributary cuts the city blocks in half. Seven-story buildings trail off into the rain. What is beyond Kuran? A silvery curtain of rain over the houses. The class divide. You have never been there. They don't need the law east of the river. What is to the north? Capeside apartments. Tower blocks crowd one another. 4.46 millimeter bullets still lodged in their war-torn stone walls. Hallways collapse from the mortar hits of a war that was lost long ago. Clothes lines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. The morning news. And closer to here. A yard. Rain falls onto the roof of a woodshed. The lingering odor of decomposition mixes with that of damp soil. What is in the south? A traffic jam. 
Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside, drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. The statue of a king shudders. He too is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. Wait, it has? What's on the other side? The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork, and tar stretches northward. Four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snows melt in Jamrock. Where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? Why am I not there? Shudder, look further. Where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? What is this? I have a brother in the cut. Where the hood at? That is a little bit different. Who was that? I got shivers. Why am I not there? To be in Martinez, where no one goes, at the runoff point of a long forgotten canal, in the whitest part of town, in the shadow of the day the revolution fell. What am I doing here? Standing in the rain, looking north, where Jamrock Rock City stretches inland. Shudder, look further. In the rain-swept distance, above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 hunches in the rain. Your vision blurs. You wipe your face with your hand. The rain stings your eyes, making you look up and blink. What's above? Coalition hero statics hang like apparitions under the cloud cover. Way up there, where rain forms, rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. Mother Effer. This rain will not let up anytime soon. At least we are dressed for it. Let's keep moving. I got the raincoat. Find Morel, the cryptozoologist. Oh, this is a Tuesday task, I see. Alright, well, I don't think the old guys are around. At least I, don't, I didn't see them when the... Ariel showed. Uh, let me just check. It said that the bridge was up. I don't think it is. Unless I'm looking at the wrong spot. Yeah, there's nothing here. Okay, so let's go behind the... to where the back of the apartments are. Um, I have a feeling there might be something we can find there. Uh, a person of interest? Who is this? Ah. You see a sturdy woman humming to herself. She seems to be browsing books. A good one? Hello, no ceremonies, just hello. A good one, point at the book. Yes, hello? She nods, her attention fully focused on reading. Who are you? Me? No one. I'm just a working class woman. <laughs> Alright, continue. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. Sorry for disturbing you. If she's such a working class woman, why isn't she working? Okay, well, have a good day. I think I know you're from the Dock Workers Union, so you have no job today, so have a good day. This was a tremendously useful interlude. Yeah, please. I'm just trying to chat people up for information. Takes willpower to even read the author's name. John Kaltz from Egonia. Maybe we'll bother her later. What's the... There's something here. This coin-operated oh. viewer is facing southwest. Right, right. Ah, uh, we found that earlier. Where is Cindy? Cindy the Skull. I have, a, I have a question for you before we continue. Anything here? Plastic. Sure. I got a question for you. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Uh, let's see... Nope. I guess we don't have the proper questions. I'm gonna need every little bit of bottles to sell. Cleaning up the town. Joyce, I would like to ask you about the reality, but I don't think I have anything yet. Let's see if we can um, investigate the back first. There might be 
something here. Don't want to talk to the Kunos. Can I open this? Yes. No, 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 no. Can I open this? Oh. Okay, not the door I thought I could open, but here we are. Eviction notices and missing pets are plastered on top of each other. See? Glasses. Logic. Authority. <laughs> uh, we don't need it. We don't need it. This box is filled with cleaning chemicals. Smells of laundry detergent. What's in the balcony? Oh no, we don't need to go to the balcony. Let's explore this floor first. Old shoe racks, boots, sneakers, old slippers. The shoes come in three different sizes. Loud rumbling snore comes from within. Apartment 12. Snoring is scary somehow. You should leave. Oh. Kim just slowly walked. I need a flashlight. What's here? Moss crawls, crawls on those bathroom tiles. Actual moth. Yeah. Moss. Moss. These shower curtains are covered in some sort of slime. Disgusting. Magnesium and Commodore Red. Commodore Red. Oh my gosh. Commodore Red. Physique? Let's see. Physique. Morale. Minus one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Or Oh, Physique is uh, my HP, right? Unless that's a different stat. Yeah. Wait, hold on. What, what happens if I equip the Commodore Red? I look like a hobo, for one. So this increases, and this uh, increases everything also. I guess that's a good thing, or a bad thing? I, I can't exactly tell. Well, we have the Commodore Red now. We have the Hobo Gloves from last time. Half Light, Electrochemistry, Logic. With the Flip Up Aviator Glasses. I just want to see what it looks like on him. Cool. Can't really get a good look, but awesome. Uh, plus one Logic, minus one Authority. That's kind of weird. And we have zero Authority now, so... Um, one authority. All oh, right. Um, I have a minus one authority from my th thoughts, right? Oh, what's this? Let's pick this up. Money! I'm going to need ten more of that today. Let's check around here. Oh, shoes. Steel shoes. Money. Someone has drawn five point star on the wall. Take this off for now. Let's have the crowbar just in case something looks like we can open. Mo oh, five real. Okay, we're taking this. That's a lot of you hear someone cash money. walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. Yeah, we don't want to talk to these people yet. Don't need to bother people, we just need to know what's going on. Postcard, Boogie Street 46. Oh my. Door 9 is locked. Okay. Apartment 8, their mailbox is overflowing. Graffito says, a firing squad for the rich. Lady, can I talk? Give me a moment. The, an elderly woman is leaning on her broom, her knuckles as white as bone. She seems to be having difficulty breathing. Oh, you're the one who shooed me off yesterday. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> she sneezes into a dirty handkerchief. 
Are you alright? Should I call a doctor? This won't take long. I only have a few questions. Uh, should I call a doctor? I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> she starts coughing red spots appearing on her cheeks. Okay, so she is pushing people away too. I see. Now, what do you want from me, policeman? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. I'm looking for a young male in his mid-twenties, dark hair, skinny build, a smoker on the balcony. Who are you? I have a few questions about those apartments. Uh, I'm not really looking for anyone else. Let's go with the guy we talked to. Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil. Right? She looks at the other end of the hallway. Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? No trouble, I just want to talk to him. Do you know where he lives? He's wanted for murder, he's going away for life. Nah, nah, nah. I just, I just want to talk to him. Do you know where he lives? Talk? <laughs> the cleaning lady starts laughing, but it turns into a violent coughing spasm. She squeezes her broom, trying to catch her breath. What was so funny about that? He lives upstairs in room 28. Ah. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Gotcha. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Alright, thanks. I'm off. We're really not interested in the lady herself, so we were not going to bother. Uh, let's see, foreclosed by Martinez Realty Associates. Oh wow, it was dark here and now it's not. A shift in temperature, the air chills around you. Dust settles on the stony floor. Rub your sides for warmth. A former architect stands before a slice of window, a room plan in her hand. A cold wave has made the air in the building stand still and frozen with temperatures falling down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. That is freezing, almost freezing. Her face, the plan, look around yourself, her face. Is red from the cold. She's breathing on her fingers, clasping the plan. Traces of sadness are visible in her expression. The plan. Faint pencil lines on paper depict the same place, but a missing eastern wall connects the room with the neighboring apartment. Ideas for arranging the furniture have been jotted down. Look around yourself. It's clean and empty, with new tapestry embellishing the walls. A standard HB graphite pencil has fallen off a three-legged stool in the middle of the room. She had an eye for beauty. Finish. It is cold. The sea below looks cold and winter gray. Anything in this uh, cupboard? Money, perhaps? Or medicine? 16 days of coldest April. What is this? Okay, so this is a um, postcard. What is this book? The cover features a row of concrete buildings with a monochrome rainbow in the sky. It tells a rather excruciating story about two lovers during a period of ethnic unrest in Yugo Grad. The book has been filed under psychological realism. Alright, we're not gonna read that right now, uh, curious as I am. Someone has torn down the wall. Anything here? Old grocery list, old grocery list on the table and checks. Bridge? Nose of head? And a little cash. Alright! We don't probably have to buy medicine today, let's hope. Can I open this? Where do we go? Ah, we got... I guess we can get to Cindy. Let's find the, the guy's apartment while we're here. As well as under, other stuff. Ruination has come. The broken arches betray the once grand history of this building. It towered over the harbor until it happened. Form a guess about what happened. A great force from the northeast fired into the city. Heavy artillery shelled the coastline. Fired from the water. A straight shot into Revachol. 
the tenement acted as a defensive wall against the worst of the shelling until it was destroyed and they had a direct firing line. Taking the ocean, look at the ruins in the water. Taking the ocean. The waves of the Martinez Inlet roll over the fallen remains of the building. The dark waters obscure the better part of the remains. What didn't fall into the ocean was used as scrap. What wasn't used as scrap was thrown into the ocean. Look at the ruins in the water. Those arches acted as support for something greater than what you see now. Only three stories stand where nine to twelve once did. Restoration has failed. What the shelling took out was never rebuilt. Underwater, iron helmets have sunk deep into the sand and the mud. Helmets of soldiers and their finger bones too. And clavicles littering the ocean floor. Who did this, this damage? A fleet, the combined armies of Occident and Grad, with Mesk volunteers, a five-nation army, hundreds of vessels. They massed airships further down in the Bay of Revachol. The artillery was so powerful. The ships not only required gyroscopic stabilization, they were anchored into the ocean floor as well. Many are still there to this day. If you squint, you can just barely see the shadow on the water, far in the northeast. Cannons still ready to placate Revachol. Hey Kim, do you know who shelled our city? The Coalition. But that was a long time ago. I think we should move on. It's chilly up here. Agreed. He fears the discussion might lead <laughs> to disagreements, as it often does. No, uh, I'm not... I don't care about that. Just taking my thoughts in. More bottles. There she is. We're up here now. Oh, the piggies have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves. But here you are. That's right, we're evolved. You're in trouble now, little lady. We cops don't like closed doors or unreachable perches or people having high ground on us. <laughs> ah, that's right, we've evolved. Yeah, I can see that. Cool mutations. She crosses her arms. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Is that heavy fuel oil? Red dyed heavy fuel oil intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. He says, studying the contents of Cindy's bucket. What did he think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. Wait, my car? Fumes are, fumes are bad for you, okay? You better hand it over. That's some um, clever cultural commentary. That's some clever cultural commentary. You ain't seen nothing yet, piggy boo. Alright. Anything else? Hello again, officers. Have... What's this door? Oh, is this the... Boiler room? A hundred tiny feet scurrying beneath the grate. The rats of the city, quite literally. Someone's been sleeping here recently. I'm guessing that's Cindy. Yeah, I'm guessing Cindy too. Enough coal to last for several winters. Smells of chemicals. Ooh, pants. Electrochemistry. Reaction speed. Poor the home laborer pants. How does it look? How do these pants look on us? Alright. Better not be disturbing. That's not bad. Savoir faire minus one. Electrochemistry plus one. This one's electrochemistry plus one, minus one reaction speed. And my reaction speed is pretty average. I don't think I want it lower than it already is, so let's not. Okay, that's our money for tonight. We got money we got cash money for the room tonight. Problem solved. <laughs> I just probably took Cindy's money, and you know what? It doesn't matter. I will take it. And this money too. The door is locked, you can't get in. The chair's new, someone lives back here. 
Can I... Can I use wire cutters on, on this door? No, I cannot. Alright. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and keep the crowbar equipped for now. Okay, so this is not the way we're supposed to be going. This goes to Cindy. Oh, what's here? Exit, it says. Okay. And now we have a... A way to go up and down. So, let's not bother these people. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. Look out, Kim. There are communists here. Inspect the symbol closer. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope disappointment and fear in equal measure why is the star upside down why white what does it evoke in me why is it upside down to symbolize the toppling of the old order i see also some social democrats were already using it why white because white is the color of peace what does it evoke in me nothing at all yet right now it's just meaningless shapes on a wall Fair enough. I was just curious. As always, let's check in the balcony. I, I want to see where um, this guy lives. 28. More money. Not as much as before. Curtain shifted just a little. Someone is watching from within. Breaker box is full of cigarettes, bu cigarette butts, and electric wires. It's a guy. Oh, what's this? Money. Just a door. Nothing for you here right now. Okay, if you say so, game. If you say so. Someone's growing rosemary, thyme, and uh, a cactus. Interesting. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. I see why. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. Knock, knock. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. He looks around, taking in the cold spring air. We should return tonight after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? Uh, sounds good. Tonight, 9 p.m. Tonight at 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's check this. 29. Complete silence. They're not home. Number 30. Voices from within sing alone. Singing along to some buoyant uh, dance track. Buoyant dance track. Alright. I guess our business here is done. We'll come back later. Trying to get down. It's a little difficult. Okay, so... I could talk to Joyce, or I could talk to the dark people. It seems to be my only option right now. A little exploration. There's this thing down here that we can't open. Alrighty then, I guess we don't have any choice but to talk to the dock people in the in the inn. Well, I got my crowbar. I think I should go ahead and pay Gart. Nah, let's pay Gart later. Who knows what I'm gonna need this money for? It might be more important than the room. But I do have a crowbar. <laughs> so I'm. Pretty much, more or less, ready for battle, uh, if that says anything. What's this? It's a bowl. They're spitting it. Reeking of tobacco. 
photos of men in overalls, toting guns, and union placards. You see hawthorn bushes outside. Hmm. Alright, well. Let's get this over with. Yes? No, 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 not you, Kim, not you, Kim. This guy. This is where you say your bed. A bronze shouldered man points at you with a beer can. Detective. The lieutenant acknowledges you with a sharp note. He's leaving it to you. Don't say anything yet. First, we need to talk about your attitude. We need to talk about the man hanging at the back. Don't say anything yet. Hey, hey, dipshit. You hard of hearing or something? The boss man's talking to you. Then wasn't talking to you, Glenn? Do not let their squeals disturb your serenity. These are but simple peasants, sire. <laughs> The chatter is too inane to reach your ears. Raise your chin and gaze into the distance like a prince. We need to talk about the hangman in the back. First, we need to talk about your attitude. I don't really care about his attitude. We just need... We just need some information. But a little posturing might not hurt, don't you think? Let's try it. What? Is he fucking kidding? This guy high or something? The little guy looks at his mates in disbelief. Uh, none of your business, Shanky. Hey, asshole, up here. We're talking to you. We are looking for Titus Hardy. The lieutenant turns to the broad-shouldered man at the end of the table. All right. Well, we need to talk about the hang man hanged out. We need to talk about the man hanged out back. Oh, this is about him. A real looker, that one. What is that tone? You sure took your time, huh? Waited for him to get real ripe and pretty for you. He looks to Titus for approval. Oh, he was a real pretty boy. Hanging up there, letting out that pretty boy smell. I can't for the life of me understand why you did it. I mean, I would have just left him up there. You must really like cleaning up other people's shit. He spreads his arms. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. Scan the room. No, no, no. Eyes here. You got business with my boys. You got business with me. He understood what you were doing. Take an inventory of them. Hmm. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. Six versus two, not seven versus two. Not a good not good odds. Yeah! You fuck with the Hardy Boys, you fuck with Titus Hardy! Shouts the scrawny face rat face man. Scrawny rat face man with two teeth missing in the front. Unlike a rat. Relax, Dennis. No one is fucking you yet. <laughs> Says the 40 something man from the corner with a plectrum hand hanging from his head. Uh. Plectrum hanging from his neck. What is a plectrum? Yeah, Dennis, calm down. No one's fucking you, you stupid fuck. A blonde man in his 30s agrees. Let Dennis enjoy his fucking, man. We don't mind. You notice gang tattoos. The man must be either Mesk or... Mas... Uh, Sarah Mizian. Sarah Mirizian. Sarah Mirizian. Okay. That's a little bit difficult to say. Yeah. <laughs> You're not even being fucked, Dennis. The fat guy in the middle lets out a single chuckle. Fat Angus. Easy, fellas. We got company. Let's see what brings the cop around. <laughs> Titus puts an end to it. Too late. You already scanned the room. You got a pretty good picture. A picture of what? Of the actors here. You could take another look at the tracks in the mud on the crime scene. Compare it to these guys. I'm gonna take off for now. Be right back. That is a that's a good call their perception. Let's um I didn't think about that. I failed a check there last time. It might be a good time to try checking again. And Kuno's still here. Of course he's got nothing else to do now. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from 6 to 12 pairs have walked here. Okay, let's try it again. We Our visual calculus is pretty darn 
Pretty darn high. Counter the Hardy Boys. Eight nice. Boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Where else have we seen a gang of men in work boots? That's right. The Hardy Boys in the mess hall of whirling in rags. Eight pairs of boots. There's seven of them, though. Who was the eighth one? Go over them one by one. One. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 46. Just like Titus was wearing in his booth, this is the big dick, Titus Hardy, the one with the ball cap on his head. Interesting. Is it? They didn't even bother to change boots. <laughs> Putting them on the scene is easy, maybe even too easy. Yeah, that's why it's interesting. Continue counting. Two. Standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 44. Either the blonde muscular guy, Glenn, or the young guy with a plectrum around his neck. Three, hobnailed work boot, steel reinforced toes. Number 43, the inked banger, perhaps. Perhaps. Four, standard work boot, number 45 or 46. Theo, the old smoker. You think you even see a tiny fleck of cigarette ash inside the print. So they're probably behind this. What else? Five. Another standard work boot. Reinforced toes. Number 44. Same as before. Either the musician, Eugene, or the muscle-bound blonde, Glenn. Six. Light as air. Same make of boot. But number 41. Small like a rat. Shanky. I should have gotten this earlier. This is so true. I should have gotten this earlier. Better late than never, detective. The whole world is dark and the tracks burn in it with strange beauty. Count the rest. Seven. The glowing outline of a standard work boot. Number 46. The imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Fat Angus. Carrying something? Probably the body. Uh, and the last one? Eight. Another standard work boot. Number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the soul. The right soul is smoother, more worn. Curious. A missing eighth hardy boy. Yeah. There's only seven of them. Seven sets of tracks, right? The hardy boys were here. Eight, actually. That's all? Interesting. Then one of them seems to be missing. Anything else out of the ordinary? Quite a bit. Note to self. This would be a good question to ask Titus. Where's the eighth man? Light step, 41 shoe. Heavy one, 200 kilogram imprint. Uh, aberration. One sole is smoother than the other. How old do you think these tracks are? Let's, um, let's start with number three and then go from the top if we have those, that option. Interesting. Let's name it the old sole. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the missing Hardy Boy. Wonder who he is. Do you have any ideas, Lieutenant? Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor? Or maybe a drummer? A drummer, that's stupid. So one of the people we are looking for is a drummer? No, it's not. Forget I said it, we are not looking for a drummer. Or, okay, I don't understand drummer. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. Not thoughtfully. I was actually thinking the same exact thing. Interesting. If only I had come up with that idea. Hmm. I was actually thinking the exact same thing. I was not, so I'm just gonna nod. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Yes, prudent. I'm not sure. We don't want to attract too much attention. Ah... Uh... I don't... not... hmm... We're already attracting attention by just being here, so I guess it, that's a mood point. Yes, prudent. Mm -hmm. Light step, 41 shoe. I'm guessing that's the skinny hardy boy. The one with his front teeth missing. Yes. I could still be wrong, but I'm probably not. Uh, heavy, the heavy one, 200 kilogram imprint. 200? This could be the combined weight of two people. One carrying the other who's tied up. Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built armored man. 
Maybe it was a fat Hardy boy, the one sitting in the middle. Yeah, possibly. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. You're right. You're right. The fat guy from the booth was carrying the victim. Maybe it was a giant. It could have been one extremely obese person. <laughs> it could be one extremely obese person. Yeah, it could be. The fat guy from the mess hall isn't that obese. He's more like a farm boy. Definitely not 250 kilograms on his own. You have to admit, he's the best fit we've got. Yeah, you're right. It's probably the fat guy. Probably, yes. This would also fit with the victim being dead from a previous gunshot wound. They had to carry him because he could no longer walk. Is there anything else that's not worth you here? Uh, let's see. How old do you think these tracks are? A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. How do you know? I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashol. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last one day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. That is very true. Good thing for cold weather in this case, huh? What do you think happened here? What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed. They all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. But we know the victim had a bullet in his head. A more precise way to put it is it was made to look like a lynching. We've been purposefully misled. By these tracks? Yes. Okay, we've been through all of it. Good. And we got a skill point. So we're gonna add another thought. I think I want this um, Guillaume de Million. My authority is low enough and we could possibly use whatever this gives us. Hopefully it's uh, something good. My logic will go down though, so... What's my logic right now? Four? Where's my glasses? <laughs> Where's my glasses? Minus one to drama. I think four is a pretty decent visual calculus. Where's my logic? Just the cool glasses gives logic? Eh, man. Is a, this is a bad time to be internalizing thoughts, huh? Oh well. I got my information. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can corner these guys. They'll probably say they know nothing about it, but we saw your boots. We saw your boots. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Titus does not look particularly happy to see you. Ah, uh, let's see. The hangman... The man hanged in the backyard. Did you do it? I found eight sets of footprints, but there's only seven of you. Where's the eighth hardy boy? Let's start from the top. The pretty boy. You guys really love talking about that pretty boy. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Why is there a container belt around the dead man's neck? Why are your footprints all over the scene? I have spoken to the dead man in a bizarre occult vision. You're involved somehow. I just don't have proof yet. No, let's not let them know about that. Ah, uh, why is there a container belt around the dead man's neck? Let's start with that. Container belt? Like we use in the harbor? Yes, why? Because we took it from the harbor where we work. Then we went out back and used it to hang him. Okay! You're not even hiding that you were involved with that. As he speaks, his fists contract, going through the pulling motion again, savoring it. Okay, so you're behind that one way or another. We did this. Together. All of us. Until he was dead. That's why there's a container belt around his neck. Yeah, about that. He was already dead before then. Aha, uh -huh, so you just confessed to the murder. That's it. Game's over. We got the perpetrator. 
I wish. I mean, this is both the same thing, but you just confess to the murder. Goddamn right. I. But we have other proof that you may not be involved in your covering for someone else. No. These seven honest men have equally come forth. They told you what happened so that you don't waste any more of your time. All seven together. They're diluting responsibility. It's an anti-arrest tactic. You murdered him just like that. No remorse. Who called the shots that night? When did this hanging incident occur? Why did you kill him? How did you kill him? How does the bullet in his head factor into this? Why don't I just arrest you? Step closer to Titus. How did you kill him? Why did you kill him? We have the bullet question. Let's start from the top. I, don't, I think we can go through all of this. You murdered him just like that. No remorse. How many people have you sent to the Shays? Ever felt remorse for them? Three. Shays Electrique is the method of capital punishment in Revachon under the coalition. During the suzerain's reign, it used to be the firing squad. Or send them to Reunion to rot. For 20 years. For life. He says it as if it were worse than dying. It probably is, actually. And Reunion, what's that? Yes, but these were all bad people. Criminals, the scum of the earth. Look, I'm just doing my job, that's all. What we do is different. We enforce the law. You just kill things. You just kill people like it's nothing. Honestly, I think I drink so much I can't really remember anyone I've sent behind bars. What we do is different. We enforce the law. You just kill people like it's nothing. But you see, a law, lawman, is something people agree upon. And here in Martinez, we agreed that this man had to die. He says, squeezing his beer can, who called the shots that night? Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Elizabeth, what do you have to do with this? Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A shadow of smirk passes her lips as she tilts her head. A trick question. Don't let her lead the conversation. Address Elizabeth. I don't have to. One of them was more complicit than others. Address Titus. No, but seriously. Who calls the shots around here? <laughs> who do you fucking think does? He sounds more amused than angry. Point to Titus, you do. You give the commands. Point to Elizabeth. I thought she did. Point at Fat Hang is the biggest animal dominance the herd. I'm guessing it's the big one. Nope. Uh, Bow to the bearded man. Gangs are usually run by the oldest, most venerable member. Points at the harbor. If Art Claire runs the Union, you answer to him, right? I think it's Elizabeth. I thought she did. It wasn't a question, dickwad. How fucking stupid are you? This asshole is worse than... Titus runs the Hardy Boys, genius. That's why we're called the Hardy Boys. Ain't that right, fellas? But she's managing you quite well. I think you got your answer, Mr. Law. Yes, there are some administrative differences. But on that night, they all acted as one man. She gives Titus a stern look. When did this hang incident occur? You don't have to keep answering his questions. The fixer turns to remind Titus. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. How long had you known the victim? Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Okay, that's a pretty honest answer. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Who was it, anyway? Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy? By the Pines cow, you mean Joyce Messier? The representative for White Pines? The same company you are striking against? The lieutenant pretends to, che to check his notes. No. I mean the Pines cow. The stupid ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. But you know what? He rubs his chin, pretending to mull it over. Wait. Is there someone else involved? 
Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Elizabeth, stay out of this. Uh, why did you kill him? Why? Because he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out alive in my town. So he was a mercenary, that's it? I am. He stepped out of line. He repeats, jaw clamped shut like a vice. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenine written all over him. Ex Oranese Special Forces. Huh. That explains his armor. A live grenade. Right here, in our bar! Okay. The man spreads his arms. What grenade? I can't prove it. But I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Hold on, how do you even know he was in Special Forces? Right, but what did he actually do wrong? How do you know he was in Special Forces? Cause one night, he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm on these goddamn special forces, and I'm gonna fuck you all! That doesn't sound like something a mercenary would do. Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there, sang some r and paratrooper song, and said he's gonna fuck everyone. Something tells me this is a lie, but... We couldn't believe it either, but he fucking did. Right there! Like some kind of animal. Sire, the tale is true. I'm sorry to believe it if to... Nah. That just sounds unbelievable, though. This is a serious violation of the karaoke code. <laughs> That's not the issue! That's not the issue, conceptualization! What are you talking about? Right, but what did he actually do wrong? Okay, besides crimes against karaoke, what did he actually do wrong? Wrong? He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. He wiped spittle from his mouth. From rape, to harassment, to threats of violence. Why the strange de-escalation? Yeah, that doesn't sound right. He regrets mentioning it. Hopes you didn't notice. To kill us all, if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. He cracks his knuckles. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. Started to come in here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, grab one of ours mid-karaoke right there on the stage. Okay, I could ask Sylvie about this because Garth probably doesn't know anything. He grabbed someone? The lieutenant is trying to make sense of this flood of information. Yeah. This girl's on the mic. A beautiful girl. Young. Gets into the second verse of Lover Lake. The fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. Show me your cunt! Why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle. Doesn't even fall down! He shakes his head in disbelief. Was this same girl who was sexually assaulted raped, you said? Okay, then. Uh, about the man you killed. Let's us. Curious. Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? He repeats like a parrot. Yeah, a clarification would be nice. Just say. There's something odd here. Yeah, I'm feeling that there's they're corroborating a story between them. Now, there's no question. There's no question about it. They are involved with putting him on the branch, but there's something else going on here. I'm not sure what it is. Seems like they don't want to talk about that rape Titus mentioned. Why not? This is a serious allegation. Make them talk about it. Okay then. Well, that's a side thing. Let's not get caught in that. Uh, okay then, about the man you killed. What about him? 
How did you kill him? We hanged him up by his neck until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? No, because that's not true. We found a bullet. Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? The autopsy showed there were no ligature marks. His hands were not tied. Can you explain that? Um, we... <sighs> Look, I'm not gonna play 20 questions with you, capo. I'll say it again. We killed him. He looks even more irritated than before. Okay. They're, play they're trying to play tough. Who put you guys up to this? Yeah. I knocked him out. Came up behind him and clapped him in the back of the head. He went down like a sack of sun. Odd. There was no... There was no signs of uh, a concussion. That's right, lawman. And then we hang the fuck. Make them a bit more uncomfortable first. Then see if it all adds up. Mr. Tats, what did you use to knock the victim out? Where did this... Where did all this action take place? Things aren't quite as crazy. Uh, things aren't quite right here, are they? they? It's not. Uh, what did you use to knock the victim out? My fucking elbow, Copper. Summer unboxing style. Yeah, I don't believe that. Summer unboxing, or Sambo, is an eloquently violent set of one-on-one -on -one fighting moves originating from the Samaran Isola. Sambo style implies stealth, cleverness, and cool. He may be lying, but he's good at it. No twitching, no rushing, no uncalled for details. Where did all this action take place? Right fucking here. Eugene already told you that the fuck had started coming to our bar. Yeah, man, weren't you listening? Okay, there's something wrong here. Composure. Let's... I, do I have an extra point? I do not. Okay, this is all or nothing. Please work. Titus is solid as a rock, and so are a few others, but... Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, that is... Yes. I think... I think uh, we may have checkmated them on that. First, tell me who's solid. Elaine, who looks like he might be Titus's right-hand man, the least antsy of the bunch. Definitely not his first time being questioned by the police. This little rat-faced fellow is solid, too. Always fidgety, yes, <clears throat> but no change there. Him neither. Mostly keeps to his tomato juice or whatever he's got there. Who's cracking under pressure? <laughs> this one. He's sweating profusely and has difficulty breathing. They've smartly kept him out of the conversation thus far. Definitely the weakest in the chain. Hey you, turn to the big guy. You having trouble breathing there? You having trouble breathing over there? There's something you're not telling me. Right, I have other questions. Big guy, what's going on with you? No. He looks up, startled, his forehead shiny from sweat. A few coiled locks are peeking out from under his warm woolen hat. Of course he's having trouble breathing. Just look at how fucking fat he is. <laughs> the man next to the big guy bursts out laughing. Fuck off, Shanky. Angus is a powerful guy. All muscle. The big boss steps in. Keep your eye on this powerful guy. Sooner or later, he's going to break like a piece of twig. There's something you're not telling me. And fuck you too, copper. Picking on Angus like this. We're done with this schoolyard shit. And just so you know, he doesn't have trouble breathing. Yeah, he's nervous. This one is a stone wall. You won't get more out of them about the night of the murder. Not yet. Right, I, th I have other questions. Like what, copper? I'll be back. Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. 
The lieutenant closes his book. I hope I didn't close myself out. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we are going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent -a cop is gonna hear from us, real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beaten. Oh, crap. I probably should have gone through all the questions. I, I was going to go back and see if I can find uh, their eighth person, but talk about the hang again, can we? Again, just get the dead guy's autograph since you're his biggest fan. <laughs> Good one, Titus. How does a bullet in his head factions? Just a sec. About fuck. Just a sec. Okay, so I kind of screwed up here. Let's, uh, let's look for our eighth person first. I should have done that before talking to this guy. It, to it totally slipped my mind. It totally slipped my mind. Okay, eighth person. I'm pretty sure you're not involved with this, but let me check you. Back already? Uh, let's see. What's going on here? It's the jam, my man. The air from the east is thick. Oh, it's a wait. Traffic jam for the ages. I talked to this guy before. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Okay, so I talked to this guy upon before. Days. I talked to this guy before, and uh, I guess I didn't save uh, in that one time I did talk to him, so I'm just going to go through the prompts to get this over with. Um, I'm going to try to pick the same prompts as I did before if I can remember which one. That's a Fallen A6 you got there. Uh, these lorries are pretty neat. Interested? Not really, just ask because I don't know. Must be a cop reflex. Good eye, my man. Yup, she's an old one, but reliable. Me and her spent a long time together. Could I get one of those Fallen track suits you're hauling? We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. Okay, he's uh, he's trustworthy. Good. Right, I had another question. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. Uh, I'm good for now, thank you. Don't be a stranger. Right, I like this guy. I forgot I like this guy. He's uh, he's pretty straight laced. Good, good on him. But at the moment, I need to check this lady. Why would she be involved? Is she a lorry driver? The woman still has her eyes fixed on the photograph in her hands. In the background, the radio plays. Okay. Probably don't need to bother her today. She probably knows something, but not today. The only other person I know would be this guy. This guy. Looking for something? Nope. So I only know two lorry drivers. How about this guy? Are you a driver? So, how'd you like our harbor? You've been in there, he means. Talked to the boss man too, probably. Eh, yeah, nice enough. Labor Utopia. Not approvingly complete shit. Eh, yeah, nice enough. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. He notes solemnly, then turns to you, a wide, wild smile, wide smile adorning his face. Right. You talk to the boss eye to eye, like men of the plain. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. Any idea who killed the hangman? The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? The Merc was hanging with a very specific type of cargo belt often used in heavy transport areas. For example, harbors. The harbor is a prime area of suspicion. In your opinion, are the dock workers involved in the killing? Let's change the subject. Let's start with the first one. What a thought. Why would noble workers resort to such a thing? Unless they were pushed, of course. Pushed how? Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. Hold up, what does that mean? He was an agent of the opposition. Attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. Did you kill him? I ain't the murdering type, but that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men. With all sorts of skills. Good to know. He's not lying. 
about not doing it himself. He means a more violent faction could easily take care of such a thing. Understood. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. No problem. I wish the best to you in your search. Okay, well, I can't find the driver. I found two drivers, but not a third one. Where's our third driver? Does our... Does our scal uh, scalper here know anything? That'd be something to find out. Wait, who are you? Everything's still cool here, officer. Okay, well... Nothing here. There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. A variety of shapes and colors. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles right here. The vendor uh, takes a pair of sunglasses and sticks them under your nose. Rummage through the box. These are all boring. Boring third-rate ho-hum sunglasses made of cheap Sirais plastic. The kind of plastic that melts in the sun. Oh, that's crap. Those UV stickers are almost certainly just there for the show. If anything, these lenses probably direct more UV light into your pupils. A UV magnifier. These are all first-rate sunglasses. Premium design, superb material, very cool. UV resistant. These will definitely keep your eyes safe and cool while doing your dangerous police work. Uh, give me those shades you recommended. Abort. These are hideous. <laughs> What's more, they don't even fit your face. You can feel them pinching your nose and chafing against your brow. Damn, officer! You look like a mega secret spy! Very secret. They're practically made for you. I'll let you have them for two real and fifty cents. They're perfect for concealing your bloodshot and baggy eyes. <laughs> It's going to be very difficult for anyone to take you seriously with these things on your face. No, you are definitely not buying those. Don't tell me what to do, Kim. I like those sunglasses. You're right, I'm too sensible for those. Don't tell me what to do, Kim. I like those sunglasses. <laughs> uh, you're right. Are you sure? But they look so good on you! You should think this through, officer. Shades of self-destruction. Electrochemistry plus one minus one logic. Oh my. Uh, let's see. Try again. Maybe there's something else here. No luck. Yeah, I didn't think All so. What you find is this lime-colored cellophane visor, produced by a bargain sportswear brand called Amphibian, apparently. There's a malformed green frog on its bent cap. Oh! That visor is perfect for you, officer. It'll definitely keep the sun out of your eyes while you're shooting criminals. Bang, bang! And all for a mere six real. Put the visor back. I can we're not yeah, maybe not. You don't like it? Sure, Square Joe. No problem. Let's get you some real shades. Wait, what? This is actually good and there's no drawbacks? I might have to revisit that later, okay. I'll look ridiculous, but my perceptions you go as it goes up. <laughs> defeated speakers. Thralls. Slaves, basically, perched atop them like conquerors surveying the land. A pair of found, durable wear sneakers, ultra serious. I can see you have a taste for luxury, officer. Can't keep your eyes off those sneakers? Inspect the sneakers. A pair of found ultras. The design is impossibly sleek and simple. A futuristic silhouette with a sleek monochrome colorway, a jet black upper and a silver-lined midsole. Those sneakers, mister. Those sneakers are the latest found sneakers. Super air, super fine, super cool. Only 50 real. 50? I'm joking. Only? That's madness. It is madness. Plus one speed, uh, reaction speed, plus one hand-eye coordination, minus one encyclopedia. Not the worst thing. And this will go well with my gloves, but holy crap, that's expensive. No! Inspect the speakers. These once respectable speakers have been conquered. 
reduced to a mere prop by the indomitable found ultras atop them. A small heat emboss on the veneer reads, Solidarity aid from the People's Republic of Samara. The speakers themselves don't seem to display any magical qualities. No, no, don't look at the speakers, officer. Look at the sneakers. The sneakers are the stars here. The man points to the footwear, but I already looked at the sneakers. What about the speakers, though? Doesn't, doesn't anyone want those speakers? These, officer? These speakers are Samaran garbage. I'm ashamed to even use them for props. <laughs> Don't waste your time on them. Samaran trash. That sounds like they're from the Samaran People's Republic, produced under the dictatorship of the proletariat. Can't I just buy the sad conquered Samaran speakers? No way, officer! These aren't for sale. They're bad speakers. Low-fi socialist junk. But I need some speakers. That's why I want them. I think I might be low-fi socialist junk myself. You're right. I don't have time for junk. I need luxury in my life. He wants to... He doesn't want to sell those speakers for whatever reason. I'm just curious. But I need some speakers. Well, if you want them... He pauses for a moment, calculating. But see... They are the pedestal for my sneakers. If I let go of the speakers, where will the sneakers go? I can't leave premium lifestyle sneakers on the ground. If, on the other hand, you wanted to buy the sneakers too, I could maybe throw in the speakers for a little extra. 50 cents? Damn, so you have to buy the sneakers first. Wow, that's quite the bargain. So he is willing to let it go, but I gotta buy the sneakers. Okay, well, what's this? There are clothes inside. Cheap second-hand clothes, smelling of strangers' body odors. Don't be shy. These are premium class clothes. Good quality fabrics, best retro design. Save the economy with your style, officer. Save the economy? That sounds off. <laughs> Save the economy? What are you talking about? Haven't you heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash. Keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco. This doesn't make sense. Why Why exactly does the economy need saving? Thanks for the advice. I'll try to be more econ economically conscious now. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Why does it exactly need saving? Look around, officer. You see all these premium goods just sitting there, not getting bored? We've got to keep the flow of goods moving. Is this really the economy we want to leave to our children? You're right, we've got to say mother economy. I don't have children, I think. It's just nature. Powerful economies expand, weak economies go extinct. Uh, this economy is really just a distraction for the cultural issues. You know, immigrants and... Look man, I just want to buy some clothes. <laughs> I just want to buy some clothes. That's good, officer! That's exactly what the economy wants you to do! Okay. You find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. The box smells like cat piss or like an old person with no money. Economical, but also trendy. Look first hand, buy second hand, keep the economy moving. Uh, find something worth salvaging from the pile of rags. Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek, a windbreaker. Surf, it says, but also wind, summer, 100% waterproof, and sport. All in different typefaces. That sounds tacky. Practical, and yet it may deaden your senses to the world around you. Possibly because of the awful typeface. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Good choice, officer. Mega sporty. And it's only 450 for you, sir. Composure plus one, shivers minus one. Eh, leave for now. Okay, so the sneakers are the... Probably the all No, the sneakers are good, as well as the visor. You know what? We haven't found our, our lorry driver. Ah, jeez. I kind of screwed up here, didn't I? All right, let's finish it. Let's finish Looks this. Like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Let's finish this because I didn't. I kind of screwed up earlier. 
I just uh, let's talk about the hanging again. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Good one, Titus. How does the bullet in his head factor into this? Huh? A sip of beer makes a surprise go down easier. There was a bullet in the dead man's brain. Why was it there if you hanged him? The lieutenant checks his notes. How the fuck do I know? Anyone could have shot him. Target practice, maybe. He's tight lips suddenly. Interesting, sire. It's as if he's <laughs> lying to protect someone. He's not very good at it. Yeah. This line of questioning is over. You got the cause of death already? Hanging. If there's any post-mortem trauma, it's your problem. This will not turn into a cross-examination. About fucking time. Well, I'm not... I'm not here to arrest him. Again. Wait, wait, wait. Let's try, let's try. Why don't I just arrest you? Yeah, lawman. Why don't you? He takes a step closer as well, fixing his ball cap. It's almost an anthropological sight, watching him try to assert dominance over you. Not in the arresting mood? His mean little eyes come alive with hatred. A fearful readiness, like an electrical charge, raises hairs in the room. By your side, the lieutenant keeps his hand away from his holster. You hear the nylon of his coat hiss as he steps closer. Easy now, let's just talk. Wise move. Yeah. About fucking time. Okay. This is, I mean, our established authority. You still haven't explained the bullet I found in the hangman's head. You still on about that bullet? A bullet in a hangman's head. You're right, Copper. That is mighty curious. He passed the back of his head. Indeed. Mighty. How did it get there? The lieutenant is fixed on Titus. Well, there are so many bullets in the world, and so many heads. He gives you an indulgent look. <sighs> I guess it's only logical. At some point, one of them bullets had to end up in one of them heads. It's bound to happen again, you know? Just statistically speaking, of course. He taps on his right temple. Sire, it would be an event most dramatic if you were to produce the bullet and dangle it before their very eyes. <laughs> I probably should do that, huh? I'm going to ask you again. Why was this, show them the bullet, in the victim's head? I think the hanging was a cover-up for the shooting. Why did you guys shoot him? I'm going to ask you again. Why was this in the victim's head? Wow! He's got it in a real evidence bag and all! The little man leans in to inspect the leaden blossom. Why don't you go home and log it into evidence? These men have told you what happened. Elizabeth, you're hiding something. I think the hanging was a cover-up for the shooting. You know what I think? I think he was shot in the head as a kid. And his brain grew around the bullet. Doesn't work like that, man. Around the bullet, man. That's a good one. <laughs> Elaine pinches the uh, root of his nose. All the goofing around is to avoid lying. It's a technique. I know that. Did you guys shoot him? Shit! I probably did shoot him. I was drunk last night. You guys know me when I'm drunk. They didn't shoot him. Yeah, Glenn likes to shoot his guns when he's drunk. Better hope he stays sober. The guy, the little guy looks you in the eye. No, he meant before he was hanged. Did you shoot him before you hanged him? Before? After? During? This is getting ridiculous. They told you what happened. Stop wasting your time. Don't worry, we'll figure this out sooner or later. Never been worried in my life, Lawman. He crosses his hairy arms, having forgotten his beer for a moment. It's not like you blew it wide open, but there's a little crack in there, somewhere. I found eight sets of footprints, but there's only seven of you. Where is the eighth hardy boy? What are you talking about, madman? There's no eighth hardy boy. There's seven of us and we're all here. He sizes you up. Or what? You want to be the eighth hardy boy? We ain't hiring. He shakes his head. Actually, boss, we've been talking and we think she could maybe... 
she. So there's an eighth Hardy, and it's a Hardy girl. Who might it be? Elizabeth? The gardener? Were you involved with this, Elizabeth? Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do the talking here. Now what the fuck do you want, cop? Did Elizabeth shoot the guy? So let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boy's matter. Nothing to do with your shit. And He points at the lieutenant. You're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. Okay, the lieutenant adjusts his spectacles. There's no point in pushing it further, he thinks. This is all right, already everyone. a victory. This is the part of the we'll video when more about things get a little bit messy due to some poorly made choices on my part. If you don't want to see it, skip ahead about five minutes. Or if you're curious, then stick around. Uh, but don't say I didn't warn you. All right, let's go. You know what? This is a white check. Week when you first met, I, I think that's on me. I don't know how that happened. Um, what is my? We got three hours, five minutes until this is done. What if I stop it? Let's stop it for now. It doesn't help. Let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. 3% all... Uh, there's gotta be something else. Establish authority. That's what I thought. Yes. Authority. Feverish thoughts race through your mind. Uh, how bad was it? Godly 16, your total 8. Well, uh, only a 6-6 six -six would have saved me there. First, you tell me someone's been raped, and then you don't say who. That's bullshit. Stomp your feet. I'm the only thing keeping this town going f to hell, and you're not helping. Point your finger, turn to the Lieutenant Kim, I need your gun. That's it, that's all I got? Yeah, none of these are good. That's it, that's all I got? Did you already try the gun thing? I hear the gun thing is excellent and has great results. You're probably right. The others are only there for filler to make the gun thing pop. This sounds like a bad idea. But it's telling me to try something else. All right, Kim, Kim I need your gun. Why? This is not what he thinks it is. This is a great idea. I'm afraid it's not what you think it is either. What? Who? Me? What is it? Everybody calm down. There's only a demonstration. Turns to Kim. Kim, the gun, please. <laughs> uh, everybody calm down. This is... Okay. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Let's just go for it. Kim, gun, please. What in the name of fuck are you doing? But... Uh I don't want to give you my gun, not after the last time. Yeah, I, that that ma that makes sense. The fuck is happening, Titus? What are they whispering about? Easy, Shanks. I want to see where this is going. I'm not scared anymore. I know what I have to do. Trust me, Kim. I am merely fleshed. There is no other way. I know what I'm doing. It's not my first day on police job. I want to turn back. There's no other way. I know what I'm doing. It's not my first day on police job. There is no good options here. I want to turn back. I really want to turn back. But I don't know... What to do here? Ah, Kim, 
I know what I'm doing. Please trust me. I know I don't have anything to back that up, but please trust me. Police job? He tilts his head to the side as if inspecting you. A brief moment passes in silence. Then... The pressure in the room grows to a boiling point. Be careful. It's loaded. He unholsters and gives you his firearm. It feels oddly light and buzzing in your hand, like a funny toy. Good. Now put it in your mouth. But what I want to put... It, wait. Why am I putting it to the mouth? But I want to point at them. Put the barrel in your mouth. So, um, behold, the, um, gives the gun back. It's getting too crazy. What? Authority? What, what, what is this about? I could kill myself doing this. What? Am I demonstrating how the bullet got into the head? That kind of makes sense, actually. Put the barrel in your mouth. What are you doing? The cold... The short, cold barrel touches your lips. It tastes like iron and hell. Genuine panic flies across the lieutenant's face. Yeah, my morale went down. What the heck happened? <laughs> Fellas, you getting any of this? These are my thoughts. This is my head. You will never forget what happens in five seconds if you don't respect me. What? That's not good. You better get ready to fucking respect me in five, four, three. No, I'm not. I'm going to kill myself now. These are my thoughts. This is my head. Yeah, this doesn't work like this. Just give it back. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's going on. Just give it back. Thank you. Nothing to worry about here, people. My partner likes to play these jokes. Is what you call dark. Dark? <laughs> what the fuck was that, you carnies? We haven't seen RCM in four years, and this shows up? I knew he wasn't gonna do it, though. I knew he'd pussy out. I kinda wanna reload now. No, no. I still have my money on him. Sooner or later, he has that look. Wait, Theo. I don't think we saw you earlier. You just speak up now. Did you like my joke? Uh, let's go back to normal. Let's pretend this never happened. Oh, let's go back to normal. Pretend this never happened. Do not think your failed suicide attempt will win you any pity from these men. Do not expect them to forget it soon either. Yeah, I wasn't. Again, it was a dark joke. Maybe we should go for a little walk, Joker, before we continue. Jogging your arm seems to have a positive effect on you. Yes. Get the serotonin running. Keeps those bad thoughts away. Well, I don't know what that was about. That was uh, not what I expected to happen. I'm confused too. Don't worry, Kim. What in the name of hell was that supposed to be? The lieutenant is gritting his teeth. The theatrical suicide attempt. We need to talk about it. Yes, I want to talk about it as well. Yes, well, I was able to recontextualize it as a dark joke. I will not be able to recontextualize it the next time. I understand you sometimes employ extreme interrogation tactics, but I want you to understand that was too extreme. Yeah, I have no idea where that went either, to be honest. We can't have RCM officers going around putting guns in their mouths we can't afford to have that image. Few institutions can. I understand that 100% it won't happen again. I went with my gut feeling and this time it was wrong. I'm sorry I put you in this position. I wish to, em I wish to embrace the gloaming ahead of time. The undoing of the atoms called to me. It's going to happen again. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to try to do it again soon. But why did she leave me then? Okay, so this was what. that's what it's about. I went with my gut feeling, and this time it was wrong. Yes. Very, very, very wrong. I'm glad you see it my way. Let's go. 
Okay, well... That wasn't what I expected. Sorry, guys, for that. I thought this was gonna go somewhere else. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? Are you the Hardy girl? I am not. She says dryly. You could be Liz. You could be anything. You could even be a model. Even a mod? Glenn, I went to law school. I am an attorney. Okay. He's right. With a face like that, she could be on the cover of Le Debutante International. He's right, you know. You're very pretty. Get a grip, Glenn. She went to law school. Okay, let's change the topic. Get a grip, Glenn. She went to law school. So fucking what? Lots of models are actually really smart people, fuckwad. You're not wrong, but that's not the point. No, Glenn. <laughs> they aren't. Her tone is cold and uninvolved. This didn't change her opinion of you. It's not her. She's not a hardy girl. Definitely. No, but was she involved? Uh, let's see if Guard knows anything. Can I help you? Nope, nothing about the bill. I want to talk to Sylvie. She might... Sylvie said not to call her again. But she might know something about what happened. I mean, she was around. Droplets of rain fall on the white on blue police livery of the motor carriage. Wait, why am I even thinking about this? Wasn't I supposed to... Do something important? Something murder-related? There's always something important. Doesn't mean you can't take a moment to admire this piece of machinery. This is a Caprice Kanema, the Caprice Motor Corps follow-up to their highly successful workhorse, Caprice 40, and the answer to the Lums racing breed, Ferv series. With its air-cooled, rear-mounted 12-cylinder compression ignition engine, driving the rear wheels through a four-speed manual gearbox, the Kanema is able to reach 100 kilometers per hour in 13.5 seconds and go on to a top speed of 180 kilometers an hour. Pretty fast. Won't it roll over in the first sharp turn? Uh, turn your attention to the motor carriage itself. Uh, won't it roll over in the first sharp turn? The high center of balance is offset by a large battery bank mounted at the bottom of the cabin, feeding all the auxiliary systems and making the Kanema effectively a mobile power plant. This tech talk is really rubbing me the right way here. <laughs> Turn your attention to the motor carriage itself. Uh, tech talk. Due to a quite steep price tag, it is very unusual to see one in police livery. The machine really puts a loco back in locomotion. Points to the vehicle. Very cool. I don't like your machine, Lieutenant. It looks impractical. Uh, motor carriage. One of many. Uh, very cool. Mm-hmm. You want to take a closer look? Uh, what's it packing there? Point to the engine. A fine machine. Run your hand over the smooth metal surface. What's it packing? 130. Ooh, that's... Is 130 horsepower a lot? I reckon that's a 7 liter V12 there. That's what? A 7 liter V12? Mama's serving some serious macaroni. <laughs> 7 liter V12. Oh, I thought it would make more. 7.2. Supercharged. The lieutenant is trying to suppress a smug smile unsuccessfully. A fine machine. Yes. An extraordinary machine. The gentleness in the lieutenant's voice as his eyes run over the vehicle's contour contours. There is gentleness. It's nice and all, but why so modest? Put some zing into it. Flare it up. Slam it down. Helium headlights would improve the range and quality of the visual field a lot. You need to slam it, Kim. Make it more imposing. Even though, ever, ever thought about switching to helium headlights? Actually, I have a pair at home. Just haven't gotten around to fitting them yet. I need to lay some wiring for the ballast first. If we ever so get this case solved, maybe we can do it together. Sure, why not? Maybe. Yes, definitely, maybe. He replies with an ap apologetic smile and nods. 
and means no. I see. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let me see if we can talk to Sylvie. Inside, we see a set of. I know Sylvie doesn't want to talk to us. A this is precinct fifty-seven. How may I assist you? I know Sylvie doesn't want to talk to us, but we need to confirm some things. Just a second, officer. Sylvie Malaika on the line for you, officer. Yes. Hello. Hey, Sylvie. This it's the police again. Oh, great. What else do you need, detective? Do you know how my paperwork ended up in the trash container behind the whirling? Not the question I was going to ask. But let's ask that. Well... You tried to jam it down the toilet, sir. Clogging it completely. After I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. Ah. So we didn't throw it out ourselves, she did it. I am sorry about that. Anything else, detective? Uh, the question I would want to ask you is not here, regarding the events of the karaoke, so... No, I think I got everything. Thank you. You hear the call breaking up on the up... Anything else I can help you with, officer? No, we're done. 57, over and out. In the cabin, east... Okay, well... <sighs> Let's talk to Joy, see if she knows anything. Actually, no. Let's uh, let's end this playthrough here for today. I didn't realize we already went for two hours. And honestly, I don't know what went over, what came over me at the end there. Uh, definitely not the direction I thought I was gonna go. Which makes me think I really shouldn't be listening to the voices in my head all the time, which I knew, already knew that. I already knew I wasn't supposed to listen to the voices all the time. And yeah, it went badly this time. So let's not try to do that again. Uh, let's act a little bit more rational. Like, he might not be thinking very clearly, but I can. So I need to you know, be his, uh, what do you call this? Not second guess. What am I thinking of? The second opinion to his thoughts. And I should do that a little bit better. I have no idea what was doing there. I didn't think this was going to be about the ex-wife. It's like, what the heck was that? What the heck was that? But at the end of the day, we really didn't get much out of anything from the Hardy boys. Hopefully we can do that next time. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking to Joyce, and that's it. That's it. Hopefully we can get something else. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck here waiting until 2100, trying to find the, the guy in the apartment, and we got nothing else to go on. Well, I hope you enjoyed that playthrough, Nuggets. Things got a little bit crazy there at the end there. I hope it doesn't happen again. But maybe we can make up for it next time. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice rest of your day. See you next time. Goodbye.